Hello everyone. So next topic we are discussing is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis we all know that so I am not going to explain in detail. So because it's very simple topic we know that. So photosynthesis is nothing much the process where the plant, algae or even some of the bacteria. Okay I hope you might be surprised because so far you might have thought most of you but have thought only plants does photosynthesis but algae and some other bacteria also convert light energy into some form of chemical energy which is stored in organic molecules. This process is a critical for life on earth definitely without photosynthesis there is no oxygen from, which is produced from the plant and without oxygen you know what could be the situation on earth. So as it provides a primary source of energy for all living organisms. How? oxygen definitely and also glucose what we are getting a lot of food from the plants again it is from the photosynthesis so this is the uh, picturization of photosynthesis how exactly it happens so that uh, we can avoid theory part of it sun produces light definitely though that light will be coming and falling on the plant uh, and that plant leaves there is something called different different pigments which are called as chlorophyll now this chlorophyll receives this, absorbs this sunlight, okay. Once it absorbs the sunlight, it undergoes two pathways, okay. Once it absorbs the sunlight, what happens? So it produces, it breaks down the water molecules which are present in the plant. Water molecule will be broke down into the oxygen and it also involves in the cycles. So that is called as light dependent. So whereas another parallelly there is one more cycle which is going on carbon dioxide whatever carbon dioxide is done no? that is absorbed again by the plants and this carbon dioxide will undergo Kelvin cycle it will give you sugar or any kind of glucose. So we are having light dependent and light independent. Why it is called as light independent because it is dependent on the carbon dioxide intake here it is dependent on the sunlight. After light absorption only the water molecule hydrolysis is happening, hydrolysis, water molecule will be break down. So that oxygen will come out and that will be released to the environment. I hope you understood. So this is enough, no need to explain theoretical part I guess. And this is the leaf and these are the pigments and every pigment has got a mesophyll cell and which has got chloroplast. In chloroplast only, we, we, which is happening here. So uh, this in chloroplast only, the light independent, light independent cells, things are happening. So you can see here some uh, the processes. Now uh, obviously the process of photosynthesis in plants and animal, and animal the little bit difference is there. The process of the photosynthesis in plants or some animal differs in terms of type of organism which is involved in a specific details of process. But if you go back to the principle of converting light energy into the some usable form of energy, it is same. So in plants what happens, the chloroplasts are there, they will absorb the light which are present in the leaves. So these are the pigments which will absorb the light which are called as chlorophyll. Okay, then exact the electrons. So that's how it converts these things. And now these ele exerted electrons are used as a power to transfer carbon dioxide into the organic molecules. Understanding? Even though it is light independent, the produced electrons from the light dependent cycle will be utilized here. So that the organic molecules can be generated like sugar and starch. I'll explain you in the diagram next. So I'll just go to this diagram. See? So this is a light dependent reaction water molecules break out and whatever the electrons are produced from this that will be given to the Kelvin cycle so that carbon dioxide will be converted into glucose or any organic molecules like sugars and all understanding. So that's how it works in plant. Uh, now the end product of the photo photosynthesis in plants is stored in chemical energy in the form of organic compound. So next we are having some animals. In some animals also it takes for example the algae it involves under the uh, this photosynthesis. Uh, which also takes place in the chloroplast. So the process is essentially the same as the plants here with the absorption of light converting it to the carbon dioxide into the organic molecules. Types we are having light dependent and light independent. So that we already know now, right? Light dependent in the presence of light, hydro water molecules will be broke down into the oxygen. And during this process, electrons will be produced. Those electrons will be given to the Kelvin cycle, which will try to uh, involved in the carbon uh, converting carbon dioxide to the glucose. So that organic compound we will get. 
okay glucose in the sense it can be sugars fruits kind of stuff anything so now the light dependent reaction how it does so light energy is absorbed by the chlorophyll other pigments in thylakoid in membrane chloroplast water vapor is split into the hydrogen and oxygen and then the excited electrons which are produced in, uh, from the photolysis are captured by the electrons these by the carriers by the this is nadp plus and then it will be converted into nadp okay that means it is taking take carrying the electron and giving it to the next cycle that is light independent next adp now this adp atp we are having adp amp and adp amp is adenosine monophosphate adenosine adp is adenosine diphosphate two phosphates will be there adenosine triphosphate so here adp combines with organic phosphate so two adp 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 in the sense di converts to one so it will give you three that is tri and adenosine triphosphate so this process is also called as phosphorylation okay and it is a fundamental step for cellular energy metabolism without the phosphorylation there is no energy metabolism understanding so this is how everything is linked okay so oxygen molecule is generated as a by product and uh, after splitting the water and that will be released as a by product into the atmosphere which we breathe right breathe in so light independent kelvin cycle again here it is about carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and then touch to the stomoplast so chloroplast so then carbon fix carbon fixation occurs and then forms the unstable six carbon compound that is itself is a you know organic compound now the resulting unstable six carbon compound quickly breaks down into the molecules of three phosphate phosphoglycerides that is pga now this three phosphoglycerides with the help of atp and nadph which is produced during the light independent the first cycle will be provide energy by the whatever from the whatever the electrons which are been produced to reduce this pga okay two molecules of pga to glyceraldehyde three phosphate understanding so from our pga we are getting g3p next now this the g3p that is glyceraldehyde 3gp molecule is used to produce glucose and other molecules now the remaining g3p whatever is left out that will are recycled and, and again you can use it for the kelvin uh, different subsequent cycle next cycle of the kelvin cycle next glucose and other carbohydrates produced in this particular light independent uh, this thing okay so photovoltaic devices photovoltaic devices all of you know based on the inspiration from the photosynthesis it has been used photosynthesis is nothing but again light energy will be converted uh, taken from the sun will be converted into chemical energy and then it can be formed by organic molecules sugars and starches also it will give you oxygen in photovoltaics it will be light energy converted into electrical energy so both photosynthesis and photovoltaics are same for basic principle converting light energy into the some another form of energy okay so the same thing is explained here so this is exactly how it works we have a sunlight here and then you might be having the solar panels you know the glass will be there solar panel will have n type and p type layer junction will be there and when the light produces uh, and this uh, uh, these photons will be uh, are energy forms so they will when they when the photons are absorbed from the solar cell the electrons will get energy so lower uh, energy electrons will go to the higher energy so that they will produce the uh, the connection so that means from valence band conduction band uh, electrons will move from valence band to the conduction band so that the, there will be the electric energy uh, will be produced electron movement will be there so that can be taken and it can be utilized and it can be stored also so new technology photovoltaics are there there are uh, some of the examples i am giving here we are having the uh, <coughs> perovskite solar cells these solar cells are new type of solar cells that uses crystalline material so this particular crystalline material perovskite they are using that's why it is called as perovskite solar cells okay so again it cannot light energy to electrical energy it is more affordable compared to the conventional silicon based photovoltaics next new generation solar cell we are having as a thin film photovoltaics here thin film photovoltaics in the sense what so we are having we are making a thin layer of material which uh, can be for example silicon or cadmium telluride to convert the ener energy into electrical in the name itself it is a thin layer now the lighter uh, they are lighter and more flexible definitely since it is we are making it as thin layer okay so it can be portable you know flexible so solar panels next we are having concentrator photovoltaic so here it uses lens or a mirrors to co concentrate sunlight into the small area so that it will focus the sunlight into small area that's why it is called as concentrator photovoltaic cells next multi junction photovoltaic sensor uh, cells so here the thin film what we saw no the same concept will be used by the different different layers so that 
we know that the sunlight from morning to evening we are getting different 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 uh, you know form of energy and then sometimes sunlight will be too far uh, you know too sharp sometimes sunlight will be little dull so based on this different different wavelengths will be there right so for this different wavelengths we are having multiple layers so that we can convert almost all the energy whatever we are getting from the side so they are uh, sun so they are highly efficient and ideal for use for the concentrated solar power system so these are just a few examples there are many more are there which the idea is to have efficient affordable and environmental friendly solar cells so next topic is bionic leaf that we will study in the next class.